I was, four, I was only four years old when my dad was called to preside over the Canada-Toronto mission. And from that time forward, he was in full-time church service for the next 50 years. I was 15 when he was called into the Quorum of the Twelve. He was always busy, but he also took time for me. As a young teenager, I remember the, uh, the advice he often gave me came in short and memorable phrases like, cool your jets, measure three times, cut once, and one of our favorites, think straight. One of Dad's favorite sayings was, keep it simple. My father's ability to tackle complex issues was remarkable. He always knew how to get the, to the heart of a difficult problem quickly. He had incredible vision to know what needed to be done and the wisdom and fortitude to do it. His favorite scripture was John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. It doesn't get much simpler than that. He wanted every Latter-day Saint, especially his children, to think deeply about the lives of faith lived by early church leaders like his ancestors Hiram and Joseph Smith, Joseph F. Smith, and Melvin J. Ballard. And he testified often of their faith <clears throat> Often, at, at one point, my father sent me on a letter, a letter on, my mis- uh, on my mission while I was just learning how to you know, get my legs under me. And he said, you have, the prophets, uh, you have the blood of prophets in your veins. I thought to myself, well, no pressure there. <laughs> but I heard... <clears throat> I hear them saying, my dad would always say, I hear them saying, meaning his ancestors, uh, all the time, get with it, do something worthwhile, get going, boy, don't just sit there. They were doers, they had to be doers. My dad was a doer. Two days before he passed, he was convinced he was going to the office on Monday. I'm sure he's still hard at work, but now he has an office with an unbelievable view. Dad was always a, revolu- uh, always a visionary. With faith and hard work, he inspired people and moved the work of salvation forward. He moved people through events like the sesquicentennial celebration of the pioneers, or places like This is the Place Heritage Park. He moved people by bringing them together for interfaith councils, Reuniting, reuniting descendants of Joseph Sr. and Lucy Mack Smith, or uh, for large-scale humanitarian projects around the world. He moved people through his books on diverse topics like suicide, our search for happiness, and counseling with our counselors, counseling with our counsels. Dad moved our souls. He taught us how to live and share the gospel of Jesus Christ through his 88 general conference addresses and countless other sermons. My dad didn't just preach the word, he lived it every day. He really loved people around the world and helped them progress wherever they were, helped them progress wherever they were on the covenant path. He always said, never postpone a prompting. Often he would be returning from an assignment weary and jet lagged but instead of going home, he would ask me to accompany him to the hospital or to someone's home to give a blessing. In fact, the last blessing he gave in this life was to someone while he was a patient in the hospital. He was just like that. That's who he was. When I was a, miss- when I was a young missionary serving in Japan, my father came to my mission, and I will never forget what he told me, the missionaries in no uncertain terms. He said that he knew Jesus Christ. I was expecting him to share some great spiritual manifestation. Instead, he simply said, I know Jesus Christ because I serve Jesus Christ. I'll never forget that moment. I knew he spoke the truth because I had witnessed his selfless service throughout my life. I have watched him minister to the one, counsel and church councils, create inspired programs like Just Serve and help change the way we do missionary work through Preach My Gospel. 
Today, in my own small way, I too can say that I know Jesus Christ because I strive to serve him. I believe that there are thousands, perhaps millions around the world, who, because of, the, my, <clears throat> because of my father's example, have developed a stronger testimony of the Savior in the same way, one drop at a time. At the risk of being too personal, one of the last things my father said before he passed, I think illustrates the life that he led. While he was transitioning from this life to the next, he first asked me, am I clean? As though it was, as though it was a question. After a lengthy pause, though he, <clears throat> as though he was being assured from the other side, his question turned into a statement. He said emphatically, grasping my hand with strength, I am clean, I am clean. As I, read, as I think about that, I truly feel that this references a dream that my father's great-grandfather, Joseph F. Smith, had, in which he was delayed on his journey and was dirty and stopped to take a bath and get clean. When he finally went to the door of a mansion, the prophet Joseph answered and said, Joseph, you are late. Joseph F. Smith replied, yes, but I am clean, I am clean. Dad, you have fought a good fight. You finished your course. You have kept the faith. I love you, Dad. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen.